The Archetypal Tarot Podcast explores universal human patterns called archetypes by investigating the major arcana of the ancient tarot. We recognize these archetypes because they are present in our own life stories, myths, and culture. Each card represents a stage of the journey for understanding the greater story of our lives. Hello, and welcome to the Archetypal Tarot Podcast. I'm Julianne Javot, a consultant who specializes in archetypes, and my co-host, Sundara Quackenbush, is a tarot consultant. And we are just back from a nice long summer sabbatical, and we are going to be leaping into the next stage of our archetypal hero's journey with the card called Strength, which is card number 11. And that's because we are following the Marseille deck. And that has a slightly different order than a lot of other tarot decks out there. Yes. So here we are. We're back. I missed you, Julian. I, I missed you, too. You were in Europe most of the time. I know. It was a great time. And, and I'm really excited to be coming back with this card in particular, to return with this card. Because I feel like after... Uh, summer vacation you need some strength to get back into uh -huh. your regular routine flow so and uh, i've just got a new job uh working with middle school girls I, I i feel like the strength card is really speaking yeah that sounds exciting and something that you might need a bit of a bit of strength for yeah so i'm definitely getting in touch with my inner strength as we look at these cards today and maybe our listeners too pull out your most recent deck take a look at the cards with us and uh it, the strength card at number 11 takes all the strength from the cards before it all the 10 cards before it, and uh and it embodies it in this stage of the game so this is this is like the halfway point pretty much right around there and uh, it's important for our journey of the fool it is so in light of that, let's rewind a little bit and talk a little bit about where we just were on this journey. Um, we being all of us, the fool on this journey, we um, were talking about the wheel of fortune and that cycle of how life works, our ups and downs, how every, t every turn on that wheel, we are hopefully gaining more insight, getting more experience. And that to me... Um, even though we talked about the gambler and taking risks, which is a part of it. Uh, but the, the beauty for me in that stage into this one is an understanding of the cyclical nature of life and how we experience things. And leading for me, leading into strength, this card, which you'll describe for us, but that, that idea of that you are gaining strength from every turn of that wheel mm. and, and, Kind of bringing that back into yourself and having the understanding and since um, strength is a lot of different things and in this card we're looking at inner strength we we can see that we can call upon everything that's happened before and kind of turn around you know a possible kind of victim mentality of like oh i'm this i've been a victim of all this stuff it's like well sure that's one way of looking at it but with that we probably got a lot from it too that's, that's so. right. So with every twist of the wheel of fate, we are given new opportunities to uh, grow, to have new, to see if different parts of ourselves can grow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty exciting. And, and if you're looking also not only where we've been, but if you want to take a peek at where we're going, we have some pretty intense cards here ahead of us. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, gathering some strength at this period of time definitely feels like a good idea. So let's, let's look at what I love, 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 love the depictions of this card. It's probably no, no accident that I ended up choosing this card for our podcast sort of image and logo. Um, and I would recommend that um, podcast listeners do a Google search for um, strength tarot and then look at the images. There are some really um, beautiful images, different things are happening in it, but the two things that are standard in it are the woman and the lion. So, Sundara, do you want to describe the uh, what we're looking at on the on this card? Yeah, I mean that that really is the striking main image of of this card and its most of its manifestations. And in this oldest deck of the Marseilles, 
uh, we've got a woman, you know, and she's she's looking like uh, actually quite frankly quite like the the magician in the earlier card. She's got the same hat, this and the uh, Rider Waite deck later on just gets more literal about it and says this hat is an infinity sign above her head. So mm -hmm. so we have a woman here who we know we can definitely see is extraordinary in in her relationship with a lion. Um, being this close to a lion, we don't see every day, so she's not a, a usual ordinary woman. And yet we do see a departure from the usual sort of women that we have been noticing in the deck. She's not on a throne. She isn't of a like a queenly ultimate goddess stature, but she's she seems actually quite approachable. And uh, well, if you uh, ignore this giant lion by her side, but it seems like she's got things under control. Mm -hmm. She does. She's very calm looking. And uh, and what's interesting about this this uh, Marseille's version is that it it doesn't actually look clear as to whether she's opening the lion's mouth or if she's closing the lion's mouth, which is interesting. Uh, I would say more in the Rider weight. It's looking more like she's closing this mouth, which, which will make sense to some of these interpretations that we'll be exploring here in a bit. But she's out in nature. She's under the open sky and the Rider weight. And uh, so let's explore what what does it mean for her to be with this uh, classically viewed as a, a quite a vicious, wild creature and to be handling it in this way. Well, traditionally, we look at animals, the symbol of, of any animal in here is being wild and the wilder nature uh, within ourselves or how we how we relate to the world. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sandera, this is the, f let's see, we've seen horses in the cards, but really like the last time I saw a really powerful um, image of an animal relating directly to uh, the main character in the card was the fool card where we started a year ago. Mm. And that that animal was kind of nipping nipping at the heels, kind of warning, hey, this is what you're doing. And it's that animal nature coming with on the journey. And this, in this card, we have um, the character directly interacting with this animal. That, mm -hmm. that idea of the wildness of nature and what is her relationship to it. And the card is strength. Mm -hmm. So when I see this image of this woman with her hands on the jaws of the lion, you know that she doesn't have the strength, the physical, literal strength to open or close mm -hmm. those jaws. So there's got to be more happening here than just physical strength. That's right. From my experience in uh, reading psychology, James Hillman, and the whole relationship we have to animals and our dreams and so forth, uh, I'm wondering if this connection that she has with the lion or with animals in general might be this ability to communicate. Uh, with with the animal nature that she's she's somehow linked with her spirit to the animal she's she's able to have a dialogue in some way and it may be through her body that she's having this di dialogue it's not always in English right when we're talking to uh, non-humans right we need to be open to many forms of dialogue when we work with our dreams and so forth because uh, they take all kinds of different shapes and they communicate in different ways uh, so uh, I think that's the beauty and the gift that this card can give us is that when our beastly nature comes up or if a, a strange animal visits you in a dream that you can have the strength to uh, face it and to have some sort of dialogue or communication. With mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot to learn, I think, from that idea of working with an animal nature, be it the literal with an animal or with with our own nature and just being able to recognize that we do have a wildness mm. that is, that is a part of us that is often either made kind of exotic and for special occasions, you know, you can see it sort of the wildness of sports and, and, and various things. And sometimes in art forms, um, and it kind of gets put up on a shelf and specialized and it's sort of like it's out there. But when we sometimes confront that wild animal nature within ourselves, be it from a temper tantrum or great anger or great reaction from something, um, it's it's kind of frowned upon. Sort of like, oh, that's not good. You must put that away. We are civilized, upstanding people who walk on two feet, not four feet. That can kind of gets puts away, put away. What I see happening with this card 
it's strength. It's not a guy with a big barbell saying like, lift this. This is, this is more about an inner strength. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more about patience, sort of a, a, there's a solidity that you have to have and that you can get by being patient. This, this card and all the depictions that I looked at was not about this, um, character, this woman rolling up on the line and saying, I'm going to open your mouth or close it. Mm -hmm. It required, it requires patience. If you have animals yourself or you ever had, you know, because you can't directly relate to them the way you do another human being. You have to have a lot of patience. Mm, if you're mm -hmm. going to train an animal. You've got to be patient and, do, and have compassion and just kind of keep doing it. And, and it's, this card is also about being, um, having composure and being stable. Um, it's more about slowness than it is about quickness. Mm. Um, kindness, gentleness. These are all the words that kind of come up. And I love that it's associated with strength because I think there's just so much like strength is about muscle and that's not really what this card is about. Right. No, you're right. It's very significant that it happens to be a woman that is embodying this image. And, sh and she's not just like this super woman type of figure. She's actually quite soft looking and she's wearing these soft robes and she's just very womanly. And I, I think that's very special to be on the strength card. I think that's a, and, and it's reminding me right now of kind of images that are coming up in the culture right now with, uh, women that are having to be strong and to uh, face their fears on their own and not be saved. And uh, this is leading us into a, a discussion about the damsel. And mm -hmm. you know quite a lot about this uh, damsel archetype, do you? I do. And I know when we were, this is again, one of the cards that doesn't have a really super direct one-to-one -one relationship with an archetype. Like we had, it's pretty easy to see the the empress or the emperor or the pope as a direct relationship to one specific archetype. The damsel did come up for me when I was looking at it because, and again, this isn't super direct, but what, what is related about the damsel is, you know, some self-control, some gentleness, graciousness, a certain amount of discipline. We th often think of the damsel as being the damsel in distress, which is one uh, facet of this archetypal character and the damsel in distress is not really related to the strength card or maybe in the shadow, you know, the damsel in distress with her hand on her forehead saying, Oh, mm -hmm. save me. That is the, what I call the unempowered part of the damsel where there's an expectation that someone will come along and save her and she doesn't have any power on her own. Uh, the strength card here in looking at the damsel is the power of the damsel is twofold. It's one, it's knowing the damsel in its empowerment knows that she can take care of herself. She does have the grace and the strength and the fortitude to take care of herself. We hope you're enjoying this episode and we invite you to become a part of the Archetypal Tarot team by becoming a patron. It's super easy and there are some awesome rewards for joining. So just visit Tiny dot cc slash tarot for more information and now back to our program another strength of the damsel is being able to receive help when she wants it or needs it but knowing that she doesn't have to have it and that graciously being able to receive help ask for it and receive it is i think the one of the most empowered parts of the damsel but that what happens between wanting to ask for help and maybe you're not getting it, what do you do then? You do have to rely on yourself. You need that um, strength and courage and your own self-control to say, I can do this. I, you know, I can, I can manage this. And that's not, I think oftentimes a one decision of like, I'm going to do it now. It's like an iterative, like, okay, I'm going to do this now and then take another step. I'm going to do this now and take another step. And in a way, it's almost a discipline and a belief that, like, I don't need to do everything now. I just need to keep taking steps towards that. And I can be, you know, I can be on my own when I do them. And that uh, is reminding me, uh, actually, of a, of a story about courage um, called the, well, it's a, from Korean, it's a, called the Tiger's Whisker. Mm. And it was uh, retold to me by Michael Mead when I started at uh, Pacifica Graduate Institute, that was just a mind-blowing, initiatory 
uh, weekend. Um, I got this free workshop before I started my, my graduate program and just even that first weekend was so life-changing. But the story to me was what embodied that and um, the, the strength that is found in courage I feel ties it in. Sh shall I tell that story now? I would love to hear it. Go ahead. Uh, so in this ancient tale, there was a woman who was in much distress because her husband had just returned from a war and he was like a completely different person. Uh, when she served him food, he would not accept the food and he would just blow up at Harry. So he was either very fiery hot or he was cold and he was distant. So the young woman goes to a hermit visited, you should know all about that, listeners, <laughs> goes to a mountain hermit and asks him for help. He was famous for making potions that could solve all kinds of problems. And she said, mountain hermit, I need a potion to give to my husband so that he can be like he once was. And he thought about it for a good long moment, staring into the fire. And he said, yes, I think I can get a potion for you but it requires one ingredient that I do not have. And that is a whisker from a living lion. It's actually a tiger, but we'll make it a lion for the story. <laughs> a whisker from a living lion, she says. She's like, how am I going to get that? That is so dangerous, I could get killed. He says, if the potion is important enough for you, then you will get that whisker. And so she thinks, she goes home and she thinks a long time how she's going to get this whisker from a living lion. And so what she does is she makes up the most delicious morsels she possibly can. She's a pretty good cook. She takes these morsels to the mountain where she knows where this lion's lair. And she sees kind of where it's roaming around or she's knowing that it's somewhere around but she can't see it yet and she just puts down some of the food and she kind of sits and waits the lion doesn't come she goes home the next night she cooks up some more morsels she goes into the mountains she takes some steps closer to where she knows this cave is and she waits there still doesn't see the lion leaves the food and so every night she would get a little bit closer to this lion's cave until at last one night she is actually able to see the lion. She leaves the food for it and goes home. And meanwhile, the lion is getting used to her presence and is greatly enjoying the food. And little does the young woman know that every night the lion's getting a little closer to her. So each night they see each other, she leaves the food, until one night they are so close to each other that she can feel the lion's breath. And she places the food down before the lion, and the lion crouches down and eats the morsels. And she reaches out a hand, and she plucks a whisker out from the lion's <laughs> snout, and the lion pretends not to notice. <laughs> and then she takes that whisker and she she doesn't run, but she backs away and she makes her way back to the hermit's house. And she says, I've got the whisker, I've got the whisker, I've got the whisker of the living lion, we can make the potion now and everything will be better. And the hermit takes the whisker, gives it a long look to make sure that it is indeed a whisker from a living lion. And when he is satisfied, he then drops it into the fire and it goes immediately up into the smoke. She goes, no, how could you do that? It's a whisker from the living lion. It was supposed to solve everything. And he looks at her and he says, is a man any more wild than a living lion? You had to take step by step the courage to see that lion. And so now you must know that that courage lives within you. And that courage is not about having no fear, but it is about feeling that fear and still taking the steps forward. So go home to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> and she takes 
this advice from the hermit, turns it over in her mind, and slowly walks out. Nice. It's not just about courage, it's about that fortitude and the patience. Right, that patience yeah. that you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it's seeing it as a, a it's often a step-by-step -step process. Um, it's not the hero the way we see it in the movies and on television where you're like, dun dun dun, dun you know, I will be the hero. This is really more of that like step-by-step -step knowing what you need to do. Just all you need to know is what you do next. And that's going to, you know, you have to have the stability to do that. You have to do it. You, you move forward in a more gentle, slower manner. Um, you don't just jump on something and just try to make it happen. You alluded to, and this is bringing this up for me, you alluded to the, the similarity between the magician card that we saw um, symbolically because that um, the figure eight, the lemon skate is, is on the card, but there's, there's something whereas in the magician card, which is I think our second podcast, where all the tools were on the table and it was very much about practical skills and tools that you can pick up and put down. Uh, there's a lot that kind of gets drawn from this card, the strength card, where all of those tools and everything now are integrated. The more kind of you have to call from within the strength that you need mm. to be mm -hmm. able to move forward, knowing in our previous trip that lots of things are going to happen and it's cyclical in nature, but we are building strength and we can reach down into our animal nature for for that energy and to understand that it's um, it's an ecosystem. Mm, very <laughs> it's not yeah. just about being on the outside and having this animal nature you occasionally relate to. It's like it's being able to relate to that as it's included in you yeah. and divert that energy as you need it. Right, that's right. So it isn't suppressed so that you, you, you become dead and you don't have access to it. Uh, but being able to be friends with it and channel it forward into your life is, is super important. Now, when she's walking back towards her husband, who, who's having the struggle himself with his beastly nature, it reminded me a lot, actually, of the Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. um, what do you know about that in relation to this card? I think it's the it's another perfect story of the the Beauty and the Beast. The the version of Beauty and the Beast in film I like the best is Jean Cocteau's uh, Beauty and the Beast, La Belle à la Bête, um, and it tells the classic story of. Um, the woman who basically, in order to, she's saving her family, she's saving her father, she agrees to go and, you know, be with this beast. He's this monster type character. And when she meets him, that's exactly what she meets. She meets what she expected to see, which was this awful, he's, you know, big and ugly and furry, and he's this grouchy, angry character. And she comes into the house as she's the damsel, she's the beauty, she's coming in and she's terrified of him, but over over time, she is able to see within him something more than that beastly exterior and something more than his behavior. She sees the kindness, the gentleness, the, the power that is not about fear within him. And she dedicates herself to being present, to basically opening the windows in the house and making it beautiful where it was dark and dank before. So she's she is bringing her own light and grace and direction into the house. And slowly they do, they begin this relationship where there is, they, they kind of stay separate and they bump into each other from, you know, every now and again. But over time and these gradual, with patience and perseverance, she does in a way, I don't want to say tame the beast, but she is able to relay her respect and love for him. And that lays the groundwork for him to, get into his deeper heart, um, his own energy and nature as, as his love and respect for her. So there is, there's a lot sort of paired up with that story of Beauty and the Beast with, with this card as well, is that there's, you know, it's, it takes time and it takes strength on both. And that beastly energy, we, you can see it as our lustful nature. And I mm -hmm. don't mean that just sexually, but that's included but that like lust, like, ah, oh, I have to have this now. There's no, there's no faith that you can get it. And that all you know is you want it when you're in that, when you've got that beastly id kind of part of like, I must have it now. Yeah. And I believe Angelus Arian, uh, who has a wonderful book on the tarot as well, mm -hmm. ties this card to mm -hmm. lust. Mm -hmm. 
and it's done actually the the famous Aleister Crowley's deck I believe he calls this lust mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. um and it's interesting that like lust one you know you'll see it called strength you can call it fortitude you see it called lust it's just whatever angle you want to come at it from the whole story here is that you can you can see those energies together how they're necessary and they're related to each other it's not just all about lust it's not just all about fortitude it's how do you work with those energies how do you divert them into something as you need it and not let one take control and not suppress that beastly inner wildness in and of ourselves yeah it, it makes me think a lot of this this imagery of uh so lion is also connected to leo which is ruled by the sun and i think about the sun as like this really big fiery ball um but it's it's contained by you know gravitational forces and just the way that our galaxy works and uh, i i and the sun is also a symbol of our self so it's we, we need to be able to hold all of this power and, and potential and force, but that it's contained like within the fireplace, within that hermit's fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, and because if, if fire is out of hand, it's burning down the house and it's, it's out of control. So we need to find that balance and, but suppression is not the answer. Right? Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. goes away and we feel dead from that. Yeah, and uh, in doing research on how other people interpret this card and these archetypes, um, I saw the word tame the beast a lot. Hmm. That kind of, I was like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't, I'm feeling ambivalent about I'm, that. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely ambivalent about it, and I think part of it for me might be that the, the word tame just isn't right. I mm -hmm. think the intention behind it kind of makes sense. But I don't want to tame, simply tame and domesticate that wild part of myself. I don't want to tame that beast. Mm, yeah. I want to know how to work with it. Because once we've tamed it, it's no longer a beast. It's no longer wild. Right. It needs to be a mutual dialogue. So like this this woman that's in the card, uh, maybe it looks like she's in control or something like that. But what allows her to be in this position is that she is listening and having a, a two-sided relationship with this beast. She has respect for it. Yeah, there's no leash on on this animal. There's no collar. That there's a big difference there. And even in the the myth that you talked about, the the woman didn't. Um, she had fear and respect for mm -hmm. it. She came slowly. I love that image of of that iterative process where you're moving a little bit closer and you're leaving that food right. You've got that sustenance and that that you're offering that nurturance. And at the same time, this lion is moving closer to her. Yeah, that's right. So they, there's a mutual attraction there, yeah. probably a mutual fear and a mutual respect of that. So there's no taming there. No, it's, and it's like beauty when she's meeting the beast. You know, it's it's done through this slow love that's taking place. Mm -hmm. It comes from a deeper a deeper place, and you can't just make it happen overnight. It's um, it's it's a process, which is also a very feminine quality and something that I think to the damsel has a part of is understanding that things there's there's product and there's process and the damsel as a you know kind of our ultimate feminine archetype and damsel just means woman <laughs> is uh is about understanding that the importance of, of process as well as product and how all of that can kind of come apart or, or come together or come apart depending on how we treat it so um, I think the Beauty and the Beast um, is a great example in terms of movies. There's there's really a lot, but um, the Cowardly Lion comes up literally because of the lion um, reference, but also that whole hero's journey of the Wizard of Oz. Each character is having to, you know, they want something desperately, and they assume that they don't have it. In fact, they don't even question that they don't have it. And the cowardly lion is like, oh, I want courage. And he's this coward, right? He's, he's, everyone's always picking on him. And, and, you know, in a way he's really more the victim, but his journey in particular, he has to realize that that courage has been with him all along. And it's that, you know, he's got his wild nature, but he also kind of has to step up and, um, be, start to be brave at times for his, you know, himself, but also the, the companions that are on the that are on the journey, so it's another interesting way of of uh, of seeing what it takes to have that inner strength.
something interesting too that I, I wanted to mention mention if it's not if we haven't already made this point like nine thousand times um, the inner strength versus brute force that relationship we saw the chariot more of the the warrior being brute force of like go forth you know I'm on my chariot mm -hmm. this is respecting the ability of brute force in the animal nature and going within and um, mitigating it as we need to but there's so much I think love and respect that you can see in this card that that wasn't necessarily present in that you know very masculine moving forward warrior energy of of the chariot and that sets us up our next card. Yeah, so um, after this point we'll be reaching a, a, what can kind of be seen as a difficult time for the for our hero, for our fool, is the hanged man. Now don't get scared away by this image. He's not hanging by his neck. He's <laughs> merely hanging by his foot, but we'll talk about be talking about that more in the next podcast. But you're absolutely right about this turning within that we're starting to see on this phase of our journey. Um, that chariot was more of that early life. I need to develop my identity and go out into the world and go on adventures. And um, and really at this stage, we're seeing a pulling inward where we can learn some beautiful lessons like we can from the strength. And we're, we're really going to have some good lessons to learn uh, as he has his head pointed towards the ground in the hanged man card. So hang with us and uh, <laughs> we'll be uh, seeing you again uh, on our usual about once, once a month. month schedule and uh, we're really excited to be starting actually our second year we started in september of last year of last year so uh fall is a great time for beginnings and um and we're starting up again from our sabbatical yes and if you have any stories or thoughts or questions please do feel free to email us we always love hearing from you and our email address is a t podcast at archetypist.com. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we invite you to become a part of the Archetypal Tarot team by becoming one of our patrons. Our patrons are awesome. So if you're interested, visit tiny.cc slash tarot for more information and the awesome rewards for joining. That's tiny.cc slash tarot. Thank you.